Hello and welcome. If you're watching this video, you're probably wondering what happens to your pelvic floor muscles during childbirth. My name's Kristen Norwick. I'm a pelvic physiotherapist, so I have a master's degree in physical therapy and extensive training in pelvic health, and hopefully I can answer this question for you. While you're pregnant, there is a long time to think about and learn about childbirth. And I want to share with you the process, how your muscles need to stretch as baby passes through your birth canal. Because I'm a physiotherapist, I have a really great understanding of your muscles and your joints and your tendons. And I'm going to talk about that today. So your pelvic floor is a muscle group. Your pelvic floor muscles are here in the pelvis. So this is showing female genitalia. And here's your pubic bone, tailbone, and sit bones. And these pelvic floor muscles are depicted in red here. So you can see there's this group of muscles. There's the first and second layer here, and then the deeper third layer here. When it comes to childbirth, your pelvic floor muscles need to be able to stretch and open in order to allow baby to pass through the vaginal canal if you're having a vaginal delivery. The vaginal opening is here, and the bony opening is all the way around here. And so you can see that the vaginal opening can stretch quite a bit in order to stretch out towards the edges of the bones. And that's what can happen. So the muscles will actually stretch towards the bones, up a little towards the pubic bone, out towards the sit bones, and back towards the tailbone. And of course, the muscles and the skin and the connective tissue will all be stretching as well. And so as those muscles are stretching, they everything is actually really quite amazing. It's elastic and stretchy and it's really, really cool. And everything is even more flexible at the end stages of pregnancy because of a specific hormone that gets released that actually makes everything more stretchy and elastic. So this stretching process is really quite an incredible. So if you're having a vaginal delivery, we know that this area, these tissues need to stretch a lot. And sometimes what can happen if the stretch is a little bit too much for the tissues is there can be a little bit of tearing. So there can be minor or more severe tearing, and that's usually graded on a scale of one to four. We don't know for sure if that will happen to you, but it does happen. So if it does happen, don't be alarmed. It's actually Again, very amazing how well this tissue heals afterwards. And usually, depending on the severity of the tearing, usually your care provider will put a few stitches in for you to just help everything heal nicely. And the other thing that might happen is an episiotomy. So an episiotomy is an incision done by your care provider, and it's usually done in this direction, so off to one side and down, not usually straight down usually off to the side. And that's done for multiple different reasons, but sometimes it'll be done if the care provider is concerned that if they let you tear naturally, it'll be quite a severe tear, or they need to do that in order to use an instrument during the delivery. You may or may not have an episiotomy. The area that I'm from in British Columbia in Canada, they're using episiotomies less and less and less because we know that naturally torn um, edges of the tissue can actually heal together a little bit better than if it was an incision. But some, of course, they're still used if needed in, in certain circumstances. Okay, so during the vaginal delivery, the pelvic floor muscles need to stretch they may tear and you might have an episiotomy. We don't know for sure if that will happen until you're in the moment. And then afterwards, if you had tearing that requires stitches or an episiotomy, you will be stitched up by your primary care provider usually. And now you're in this process of healing. So if you've ever done too big of a stretch, like I think I stretched my hamstrings too much once and they were just really sore afterwards, there is that aspect of your muscles were just stretched a lot and that's hard for them and they will be sore afterwards. There's also a lot of other things going on at the time. So there's swelling, there's pain, there's all the hormonal changes, the healing. There, there It's going to feel like there's a lot going on in the area and there's a lot of healing happening. Specifically, your pelvic floor muscles are going to start to 
work to regain some elasticity. So after a stretch, they're usually gonna tighten up a little bit to protect you and start to regain um, function. And so it might feel like it's hard for you to activate your pelvic floor muscles right away. You might not even be able to feel them. Um, they might feel sore. They might, you might not even notice them. There's a wide range of what you might feel in this initial you know, few days. And really, we don't expect for you to be able to feel your pelvic floor muscles are contracting and relaxing like maybe you could feel before childbirth. There's a lot going on and it's okay if you can't feel them and you're not sure if you have any strength there. Immediately after childbirth, you're going to be healing and recovering. So your muscles are going to be in what we call the acute phase of healing for the first two weeks. And that's really when they're just healing themselves, when there will be swelling, when they're going to be recovering from that big stretch and or um, healing where the stitches are. And then for the next few weeks, you're in the repair phase. So that's when your muscles are starting to repair themselves even more. So this is where they might start to align fibers in a certain way so that they're able to contract a little bit better. You might find you can feel them a little bit better and contract them and relax them. But if you can't yet, that's okay. And then after that, you're into the remodeling phase. So this is where the muscles actually remodel their interiors of their cells to regain normal function. This is something that for some people can just happen, but for a lot of people, having guidance during this phase is really, really helpful because your muscles might be just a little bit tighter than they were before or a little bit weaker than they were before. And without targeted exercises given to you by a pelvic physiotherapist, you might not be able to really remodel the muscles back to that full functional potential. And so there can be small symptoms that you think, oh, that should probably just go away, but they might not go away on their own. So, um, for example, feeling like you can't control your gas, or there's air entry into your vaginal opening, um, or there's pain with intercourse, or your bladder function isn't quite back to normal, or your bowel function isn't. Those are all signs that your pelvic floor muscles might not have fully remodeled back to the functional status that we're hoping for. And all of those symptoms are treatable. So sometimes I'll just need to give just one specific exercise to activate and relax one area of the pelvic floor. And then that helps the muscles regain elasticity, regain that final bit of strength. And then the symptom is back to normal. The biggest thing to emphasize here is that a pelvic physiotherapist can help your muscles recover postpartum. We can also help you learn how to relax and open your muscles before childbirth so that your muscles are nice and relaxed and open. You can also do perineal massage leading up to childbirth, which I've done a video on that, so I'll put that in the description of this video. And that actually helps you stretch and open and create some more elasticity in the tissues before childbirth. That massage has been shown to decrease um, rates of severity of tearing and need for episiotomy. So we know that it helps your muscles prepare. And then afterwards, we can help you recover. So if you're noticing any functions aren't going back to normal, things are painful, um, you notice scar tissue that's still sensitive, there's treatment for all of that and we can help you. So whether it be a little bit of self-massage or certain pelvic floor muscle exercises, there is a whole wide range of things that we can help you with to get your muscles back to the functional point that is what you need. So although you'll hear people say, oh yeah, you just pee your pants after childbirth, that's just the way it is, or oh yeah, sex will always hurt because of the stitches, those comments aren't 100% true. It is true that a lot of people do experience those things, but it is not true that you have to just live with it, and it actually isn't a normal function of your pelvic floor muscles. If you're experiencing those things, there is treatment out there for you. You can access treatment and you can recover from that and your function can be back to pre-childbirth. 
So I want you to know that there's pelvic physiotherapy out there for you. Um, depending where you are, it might be pelvic floor physiotherapy, pelvic health physiotherapy, physical therapy, pelvic physio physical therapy. So make sure you reach out and find someone that you feel comfortable working with. We see everyone at Karen Physiotherapy over video call. So if you want to work with us, please feel free to visit the link in the description of this video and we would be happy to help you. Okay, so to recap, your pelvic floor muscles need to be able to stretch during childbirth and open up the birth canal. And then they need to be able to recover afterwards. You might experience tearing, you might experience an episiotomy, and you'll definitely experience healing afterwards. And I promised I would mention C-section. So if you have a C-section, that's where there's an incision right above your pubic bone. So the incision itself is not um, impacting your pelvic floor directly. But what can happen is if you have a surgery here and your pelvic floor muscles are right here, you can see it's so close then they might contract and be a bit tighter than normal just to protect the area. They might be impacted when swelling and healing is going on in the area, can impact how the muscles are activating and what they feel like for you. So although you didn't directly have a stretch of your pelvic floor muscles, you could still experience pelvic floor symptoms postpartum. It's definitely not a guarantee, but if you notice your bladder, bowel, or sexual functions changed at all, and you're confused because you're like, but I had a C-section, that could be because your pelvic floor muscles aren't quite firing and working the way that they were before, and there's treatment out there for you. You can see a pelvic physiotherapist who can assess your muscles for you and determine if you need some exercises to get them working exactly how you want to again. The other thing is your core muscles can impact how you're using your pelvic floor a little bit too. And so the C-section does impact your core muscles directly. So the core works in conjunction with your pelvic floor for multiple different things that you use your body for. So if your core hasn't fully recovered from the C-section, that can impact your pelvic floor muscles and vice versa. So getting a physiotherapist who can help you with your core recovery and your pelvic floor can be so, so, so helpful, especially if you're experiencing any symptoms. So whether you have a vaginal delivery or a C-section, your pelvic floor muscles can change with childbirth and afterwards. A pelvic physiotherapist or physical therapist is an absolutely really helpful person to have on your team. So don't hesitate to reach out if you want to see one of us. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.